Alright, what is going on everybody? Today I'm going to be doing my 100th video. And just to make sure it's my 100th, like for you guys to tell, um, as you can go, if you go on my channel and go on videos, um, you can see that it says uploads 100. So this is my 100th video. I, w I just wanted to, before I do, you before I do my review of Morel's action, because you probably know that down the title, or up in the title, wherever the title is for you guys. Um, I just want to thank all of you guys for th for this amazing journey of YouTube basically and thank you for changing my life basically because without YouTube I would just be staring at a computer with no one to talk to just playing Minecraft alone and maybe watching other people YouTube videos instead of having fun making them so thank you so much this is an another great milestone I've so far reached like um at least I think three three or four milestones the first one was 100 subscribers second was 10,000 views third was 150 subscribers and then 15,000 views and that's and then this one which is 100 videos so that's actually five milestones and I, 100 videos is just amazing of how much i've been on youtube um i know that isn't much for from when i started it but because i'm really busy still but for a guy like me and um how young i am i think 100 videos 160 subscribers and over 16,000 views is amazing in just a few months so i just wanted to thank you so much and that's what basically all i wanted to say before the review so what i'm going to do for the my home subscriber special is a, a small little review of what i think is the best recording software for games desktop reason to desktop basically anything recording the screen of the computer for every any computer out there and it's really good you probably already know it's called morales action and yeah let's get to it so right now i'm in the desktop version of morales action as you can see i am recording the desktop right now and here is the main screen of what you start off and um what i like about this program is like in, comp in comparison to other programs is that it has its own player and it has its own like directory sort of thing at the side at the on the left side so you, you don't have to go to where it is yet you, you have to minimize go to where the folder is and that's where all your videos are you can just go into it um go in and play it from here in the program it's really simple or if you want to go to the folder you right click you can delete you can open it and play it or you can open the output folder which shows you the folder of actually where all the videos go and you can export it and which i i don't really recommend doing it, it actually compresses the files but yeah it, it, it's you don't you don't have to do that and delete all files from the folder which i don't think it's a good idea unless you have all crap videos in there or not or weird videos in there so um yeah the, this is a really good bonus um than other softwares because m most software doesn't have this little thing at the side here and this is the main tab as you can see there's six tabs here and in the last one which is general settings there are seven more tabs so in all in all there are um if I can do my math correctly, 14, I mean 13 tabs all in all, and it, which I think is really cool. Um, and as you can see, I can't really click on that, but this is the um, the button that you use to start and stop recording. As you can, it's F9 for me, and it's it and yeah, but you, and you can change that by going to general settings and the last one on the right, and you can change all the hotkeys, and there are even more. So there's a lot of things you can do with the software. So back here, these are the three types of recording. This is desktop, which I'm using right now, active desktop. And if you have 1.16 version of Merle's Action and you update it to Windows 8.1, the desktop will have a green screen for you. So you might want to update to 1.16.3 of Merle's Action so you can record the desktop properly. So this is the desktop, which is the middle one. It records like everything basically, like as you can see, because you can see every, all my icons and my desktop and stuff. This is the uh, this is the Windows like DirectX, OpenGL games and applications, which is basically only the window and stuff. So I can't actually click on it because it will stop my recording. And this is a active desktop region. So if you want to just record a little slit of desktop, so I can only record this top right corner. Or if you're playing a, a web-based game like Happy Wheels, you can only record like the little screen here. So yeah, that's what I really love this, about the software. Some softwares don't even support um, desktop; it only supports um, game recording. But Fraps actually does support desktop recording. But um, this has a lot more features, but I think is way, 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 way better than Fraps. I'm telling you right now. If you have Fraps right now, and if you cracked Fraps, well, it's not good. I just don't. 
delete your fraps and get this if you have to crack it if you go ahead even though i don't recommend it but yeah so and this is the active desktop region so like that so um but if we go down here we have the file format it's going to record to i recommend avi because it's good good quality and everything mp4 is it's, mo it's mostly if you want to like record and put it on your iphone or something basically video size original you can record to 2240p 360 480 720p and 1080p or the original resolution it's at, it's on um also this is the video frame rate which it will like cut the recording to but if you play a game like minecraft you can, and if you get like 60 fps or 180 fps while you're playing it will record at 30 but you're still gonna play at whatever fps you get originally so that's what i think it's really cool fraps when you record at 30 it makes you play at 30 which i don't think is really fun for some people because on you i recommend 30 fps because on youtube the fps it only supports is 30 and up to 30 so you might as well just play at like how many fps you get maybe it's 60 maybe it's 120 or something but just record at 30 or if you want you're gonna record at 50 or 60 but those are for if you want to do like montages or if you if you're uploading somewhere else on youtube but if you're uploading to youtube 30 is the best option for you and this is duration i don't it just cuts the video to whatever you don't really i don't really like that because i want unlimited recording um perfect video match mode you can click that so it'll tell you what perfect video match mode is but basically perfect video match mode is basically if you're recording a youtube video it records how much fps the video's at so it doesn't record at 30 it just records if the if the video's at 60 it'll just perfectly match the video if you're recording an actual video that's already made like if, if you're recording a youtube video i recommend you click use perfect video match mode record system sounds if you want to record other like the sounds that come from your system click that and allow multi-channel auto recording some and this is just if you want to have like surround sound 5.1 that's basically all it is and microphone always record all right, so that's basically the best settings for you guys. I have it. I have this on original instead of 720 because, well, there's not really any need. I can just cut that down in one I'm editing. So you can actually. It's better if you go on 720p for some people, but I just keep it at your original. Um, that's the recording tab, and these are basically the best settings for. For desktop, I keep it at original, but for games, um, I wanna I scale it down to 720. Next one is live live streaming. Um. I don't really think you want to mess with this tab if you just want to do YouTube videos, but if you um, might as well go to another video about real election live streaming. But basically, you it's kind of like XSplit, kind of. You just do the video size, frame rate, your streaming service, and your stuff here. And this is just how many videos you have left. I have the full version, so this will be forever. Next up is audio recording. This is basically like a program like Audacity where it just records your voice um next is benchmarks this basically does a notepad file of all your fps and your stuff screenshots and the, the screenshot only works while you're recording and you can choose either bmp P, png or jpeg i think png is the best quality one as you can see i i think i accidentally clicked the screenshot button a lot because i don't think i've done this many screenshots purposely but oh well um next up is the general settings or the settings actually and this is also maybe the second most important tab there is so this is general settings i just keep all these off because i don't like to check for updates i don't want to do all these stuff um english of course if you want a different language there are a lot here i just keep it at english next is video recording settings this is really important too quality keep it on normal it's good input range keep it at that and multi-core recording, yeah, you have to click that if you have more than one core. And if you probably, if you're doing YouTube videos or playing Minecraft, you probably have more than one core. So click that. It uses all the cores and combines them to, to have the best quality you can. Record mouse cursor. You can. I like to have that on because honestly, hiding something from your video, I don't really think there's a need to do that. Visualize mouse clicks. I think that's only for good for tutorials. So I actually should have clicked that before. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, overlay graphics. This is basically like adding a watermark on the top right corner. But I don't really want to do that. I, it's, I think it's better to do that in like your editing software like Sony Vegas Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro. Because you can customize it. And yeah, you have the position and the actual 
input file. Next up is webcam settings. And what I like about this is you can actually add a webcam and a face cam to your videos. You can have it in the um, top left, top right, blah, blah, blah. Um, as you can see, I have these DX Tori video ones because I also, I also have DX Tori, but those are not actual webcams. I have my HP HD webcam 3310 hooked up, so I can record that. But also, if you have two webcam devices hooked up to your computer, you can record both of them, and which I think is really cool. And I think this is what Morales said that this, this was good for. Is basically that if you you have one for your face like one webcam for your face and if you're doing like a racing game with an actual controller hooked up to your pc that's another one so you can see your hands on the steering wheel something like that or if you have two people in the room you have two webcams to show both of them and yeah i think just really awesome and i wouldn't even think of that adding two webcams and it's it's amazing how it adds one webcam like only one but two is just really cool i clicked this because my webcam records in 1280 by 720 um i i think and this basically converts it to uh because because that 1280, 1280 by 720 is a 16 by 9 ratio i like it to have to the i like to have the face cam for four by three ratio it just crops the sides out a bit and that's really cool and this one if you click on it it's just a preview but i don't have the webcam on right now because you can't see the webcam webcam here and yeah that's that's cool and this one is the audio settings and what you do is audio device um that's system default i actually recommend you put this on the microphone right here there we go this is the volume do not have it at 100 because it will be so loud uh i like having it at 63 65 somewhere around that well it definitely depends on your microphone um uh, record microphone and separate audio track this um i'm telling you guys right now this is a really you really want to click this because um as it really helps a lot if your audio, if you're, let's play, let's say you're playing COD, there are a lot of sounds in Call of Duty, like explosion gunshots, and if you're trying to record it, the gunshots and the explosions, are, if they're way too loud, then your voice, and you can't really, um, you can't really increase the volume of your voice without increasing the audio of the system sounds if you only have one audio stream, and by one audio stream, let me just show you an example here. And by one audio stream, as you can, if you go into here, one sec, file new. As you can, sometimes when you see um, a video, you have the video on top and then the audio stream on the bottom, and the audio and the audio stream on the bottom contains both the voice and the system sound into one, so you can't and it's so they're not separate. But Merle's action has an amazing, brilliant option um that if you put microphone separate audio track let me just bring out an example for you guys let me see um uh, I'm this one. as you can see yeah, oh, let me do this no there are three two audio tracks you have the video this is the one for system sounds but there are no system sounds yet in here and this is only your voice so let's say this is the, this is the call of duty gunshots and the top one actually is the system sounds and this one is your voice only it separates both of them so they're not synced into one audio stream which i think is super cool so if um if these are too loud you can bring that down or if this is too loud you can bring the volume down right there that's what i think is really cool about the software and just a great feature and dx tori um, but the problem with this, well, there's not really a problem. The only downside compared to the X story is that it only it can the maximum of of audio streams is two, the uh, system audio and the microphone. Whereas in DX Tori, it can let you add up to eight audio streams, which I think is really no need. But the, it's a good feature for DX Tori. But since but since I only have system sounds and um microphone that i'm recording i only need two audio streams which i think is really good for this next up is system sounds here um you just do your speakers or your headphones if you have some or your headset and yeah that's it that's it audio balance what i think is really cool is is um the microphone like you can have it at 50 50 so they're equal levels or you can have the microphone higher i like having the microphone higher so you can hear me clear loud and clear because my skype friends are actually really loud so i like having it at 60 40 actually and this is bit rate i don't actually have no idea i just keep it at this and i get good quality you can have it all the way up here 
I think that's okay, but I don't really know. This is HUD settings, which is basically like, you know, in Fraps, when you get the FPS in the top right corner and the top left, this is basically the same thing. Except it doesn't just show the FPS, it shows your FPS, the average FPS you get, and a, and it changes from blue to red if you're recording. And it's really cool. You can have it here, 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 basically anywhere. Whereas in Fraps, you can only have it on the corners. You can't have it in the bottom. But you also can't have it at the sides or whatever. And I like to hide the HUD during desktop recording because if you're recording the desktop, it also records the FPS, which I think is not professional looking. So I, I click that. And hide hide HUD on action startup. I don't click that because I don't want it to show. Next up, next up is export settings. This is basically, as I said before, if you right click and hit export selected file, I don't really like having that, like doing that. But if you want to export, I recommend exporting mouse cursor and click visualizations and this is uploading to youtube if you basically want to upload a memory password blah 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 uh you can if you don't when you download software it's basically really simple and this is the these are the hockey jeff hockey's recording video audio benchmarking which i don't really do but I sometimes i accidentally do it you have a lot of stuff you can do you can even you can even toggle the webcam you can cancel the recording so it just doesn't even save the file. I think that's what it does. Um, add a bookmark. I have no idea what that is. Maybe it's like something. Mark recording as favorite. Oh, you can mark favorites. Cool. I didn't even know that. And webcam. That's how you toggle on the webcam. And that's basically the gist of the software. I think it's a really good software. And if you want to know the best settings, these are the best settings for lower end computers. Have it. If you don't want to record in HD, I think 480p is okay. But if you want to record in HD, record in the 720p only. AVI and 30 FPS. And yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have a feature for codecs and stuff, but that's okay. And what I really like about the software is that there is no lag whatsoever. In Minecraft, I, before I got like 60, I get 60 to 90 and to sometimes 100 FPS. And when I record... I lose like two frames per second or something, two FPS, or two frames, or like five, two, like it's really minimum, and sometimes I, I don't even lose any frames, so that's, most of the time I don't even lose any frames actually, so that's what I really like about the software, and using DX Tori and Merle's Action, I gotta say that I really, really love Merle's Action a bit more because of DX Tori, there's, I got, I've been getting some screen tearing, not screen tearing, but laggy problems, and when I try to skip to a part in the video, it lags up, and then it plays again, and that, I just think that Merlis Action is a really good software, and I know there are a lot of good softwares out there, but this is my favorite, and in my opinion, the best out there, so yeah, I'll have a link in the description for their website, and I didn't really show you, but if you go to buy now here, home use is... 30 bucks and commercial use is 50 so i actually don't really know let me see commercial is for companies home so basically if you want to only record youtube videos wait uh oh yeah commercial use um is required for individual users uh, if, for example, when you want to create sell tutorials, when you create videos and monetize it, so yeah, it really sucks. But if you if you're monetizing your YouTube videos and if you're a YouTube partner and getting paid, you, unfortunately you need to have the fifty dollar one. But if you're just doing it, if you're if you're just posting small YouTube videos, you're not monetizing, it, you're not getting money off your videos. I think home use is perfect. So yeah, that's basically wraps up my tour. I know it was a long video, but I just want to be in depth with all this. And you can actually change where your thing is by clicking here, but I don't want to because it might mess up my recording. So, yeah, you can play around with the software once you get it. I hope you enjoy this. Hope this helped for you, some of you people. And, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. And then again, thank you for this amazing journey. This is my 100th video, too. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say, guys. Thank you guys for watching. And, as always, stay worthy, my Oreos. Peace out.